Santonio Holmes with a great catch in traffic. Dude. What a play by Santonio Holmes. One of the greatest games. Santonio Holmes. To ever be played. Running down the sideline. On earth. I don't know how he did it. Unbelievable. Incredible. <laughs> what just happened in this moment? Yo. Nineteen ninety-five, I remember Carl watching the Pittsburgh Steelers lose to the Dallas Cowboys. Two interceptions against the wide receiver. Wide I had just became a Pittsburgh Steelers fan, and the reason I liked them was because my uncles were Cowboys fans. I was always rooting against them, and I fell in love with the black and gold because our little league football team, the Bell Glade Panthers were also black and gold. So getting drafted to the Pittsburgh Steelers, being able to choose what number I wanted to wear, to put on that black and gold uniform and say, wow, from my childhood wearing black and gold to my professional football team wearing black and gold, I get a chance to play for the team that I love, the team that I witnessed get beat in the Super Bowl. So that kind of drove me to wanting to make sure that if we got a chance to ever play in this game while I'm wearing this black and gold uniform, that would never happen to me. Super Bowl 43 at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. It felt great to, to actually be back in the state of Florida. I've never played at Raymond James Stadium up until that first time playing in Super Bowl 43. And this is it, the biggest game in sports as the Cardinals take on one of the most successful franchises in the history of the National Football League. Pre-game, you're here for the game. You're not here for the glamour, you're not here for the lights, the superstars, the celebrities that come out to watch, and those people on the sideline. You're here to win the ball game. Making a regular ball game. I know it's gonna be hard, but trust me, take it from me. I, I didn't do it, you know? Yep. yep. You don't have to do anything other than just be yourself. What's okay. up? In his heads, Arizona won the toss. Arizona won the toss, defers to the second half. When the Cardinals won the coin toss and deferred to give us the ball to start the game off, it was like, okay, they just messed up. I don't know about y'all, but I ain't gonna let nobody stop me from getting that win. In the film room, we studied the way the defense played, knowing that Wilson, you know, loved to play down in the box and that they were gonna either play cover one or cover three defense to, to keep us from running past them. Our focus and our game plan was to just take whatever they gave us and capitalize whenever we caught the ball and make plays afterwards. Knowing that Rogers Cromartie was a rookie and a quote unquote, he was gonna follow me the entire game. Um, that was fun. Roethlisberger will take this snap out of a shotgun. Fakes the inside give, works it to Holmes on the outside, gets a block out there from Miller, stays inbounds, and Santonio Holmes has been a big play guy in postseason with a gain of 25 yards. My first catch in the game, I remember catching it and getting on the sideline, and I remember seeing Heath Miller right in front of me, and he had got a great block, and he was driving the defender, and I knew if I could cut outside of him that I would try to tiptoe down the sideline and, and, and try to scoop past these guys. And if I cut back inside that I had, you know, a wall of guys coming from the defensive line to linebacker and even, you know, downhill to safety coming. And had we had just, oh, I mean, two, three more inches of sideline where I could have planted my feet and, and drove my shoulders towards the end zone. Oh my God, you know, that, that kind of opened me up and I was so ready to just continue playing the game. Okay, first and goal at the two yard line. So we gotta be alert if we don't get something here to clock it. They're, they're not gonna run it. They come up short, they're gonna be too close to the ball in the end zone. This is a throw into the end zone. <laughs> Do you even have to ask what happens right before halftime? Dude, I remember sitting on the sideline, I think I had my head down. Like, well, come on defense, just hold them. Don't give them a chance to score a touchdown at this moment. 18 seconds, and it will be first down and goal at the two. And I remember just hearing hearing the crowd yell and cheer in the sideline, you know, going crazy. And I'm looking, you know, trying to see what's going on. From the gun, Steelers show blitz. Here they come, he gets it away and it's picked off. 
at the goal line. James Harrison to run it back, and Harrison is past midfield. Harrison going down the sideline. Harrison still on his feet. Harrison is going to go all the way and waiting for the official to get there. Touchdown is signal. I look up and I see Dio running down the sideline, and it's like, oh man, oh he, oh he might score. Oh, go Debo, go, 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 go. Oh, oh, hey, hey, we just scored a touchdown. He just ran back the ball. Did you really just see that? Did you see that play? <laughs> what just happened in this moment? Yo. An amazing play by James Harrison. A 100 yard touchdown return. This has to go down as one of the greatest plays of all time in Super Bowl history. And we was able to witness that. For a linebacker to do what he did, that was incredible. He needs to pin this one inside the 10. Graham, high kick, far side, cards are under it, and Michael Adams kept it from going into the end zone. He downs it around the two yard line. We got this, we are built for this. We are built for this. Here's the situation, 326 to play. In the fourth quarter of Super Bowl 43, the Cardinals trail the Steelers 20 to 14. If you stop them here, you got a shot at getting good field position. Oh my God. Nervous. I remember tapping on Seven's hip and told him, Hey, I want the ball. Hey, I want the ball. Wasn't sure if he heard me. Didn't sure if he was paying me any attention. Didn't say anything. And we're going to have a third down and 10 now with 304 left in the fourth. And a quick take of safety here, too. Out of the gun, Roethlisberger is going to throw over the middle, and the pass is going to be caught by Holmes. Boom. He calls my number. First play come to me, throws the ball. I'm not even ready for this pass. When I say the minute my right foot hit the ground, the ball was in my lap before I could get my head around and I was able to snag it and get tackled. And that feeling of saying, oh, he's ready. He heard me. And then I turn around and I see there's a penalty on the play. And a flag is down. Holding. Offense number 62. Ooh, that's a safety. The foul occurred in the end zone. Safety. Safety. Wow. The Cardinals are alive. You want to talk about deflate? That took everything out of me. It took everything. Because now we don't have control of the ball anymore. Now we got to punt the ball back to the Cardinals. Coach Feetner, you know, is talking to me. He's like, hey, Tone, don't worry about it. You know, it's things out of your control. You know, you can't, can't worry about that. It'll be all right. Just stay focused on the next play. All right, coach, all right, coach, all right, coach. We're sitting there, we're talking, we're talking. <laughs> and I look up at the Jumbotron. And there's another deflation. Second and 10. Warner has to go. Fitzgerald in the Steeler territory. 30, 20, 10. Arizona has the lead. Larry Fitzgerald is running down the middle of the field for a touchdown all by itself. How are we supposed to win the ball game? How are we supposed to win the ball game? One thing you know, when you get out in front, you never want to look back. Right. At this moment right now, this is when Tone Time talks to itself. This is when the goosebumps starts to roll. This is when the adrenaline, the heart starts pumping. Now I'm daring to be great. Who's daring to be great? I'm daring to be great right now. Right now, right now, who's daring to be great? Cause I'm daring to be great. These are the moments that we're thinking about from our childhood that we wish we could be a part of and we get to live it. Please don't let what happened to our Pittsburgh Steelers in 1995 happen to us. And they have a long field to drive. From the 12. Roethlisberger 
avoids the sack. Docker chases him, throws on the run, caught. He extends the play again. It's Santonio Holmes makes the catch, 27 yard line. My responsibility is to get open, uh, whatever the play call is, you know, run it out to execution. It starts up front. They have a very tough task. They don't know when he's shifting left or right, up the middle, and he's moving all around in the pocket. Back in practice, Ben would always tell us, the play is not over until either I don't have the ball or until I don't have the ball. <laughs> and it didn't make sense at the moment, but there were a couple of times that when younger guys got into our first tier of practice that Ben would not throw the football and he would run a scramble and it was live practice. And we had to continue playing throughout that practice moment. And there were guys getting yelled at because they weren't still in the moment. They weren't continuing to play the game uh, because they've given up on their routes and they thought everything was done. But that was seven just being seven, understanding that he has to be able to continue to play these moments out in practice so that he's always ready for these moments when they come in real life. Rushing five. Ben pumps, throws, caught, Holmes, Francisco falls down. Holmes is going to take it inside the 10, and he's going to get to the five-yard line. We had a curl route call. The coverage went from a cover two to a blitzing corner, safety rotating down to, to continue to cover me. Ben made a pump fake, froze the defender. We were having fun allowing number seven to run the show. We were so in sync. Four-man rush, Ben coming back the other way, and Holmes can't make that catch. Oh, man, the next play. Was I ever looking to just finish that play? I felt that everything that I did from getting off the line of scrimmage to running a good route to understanding the coverage that they were in and being in the right position at the back of the end zone to make this play that this was executed to perfection. But I forgot one thing, the most important thing. It doesn't matter how good you run a route, how much uh, separation you get in getting open, or even your placement, you gotta have the football in your hand. And it's just beyond the outstretched fingertips of Santonio San Holmes. And when that ball slipped through my hands, when I hit that ground, all I could think about was my mom in the stands and she had just witnessed me drop the game winning pass. The entire world, the entire Belle Glade, Florida, the entire Palm Beach County, the entire area that I represent had just witnessed their very own, their very own go out and drop a wide open touchdown pass. And all I could think about was, I'm not gonna get another chance at catch another pass. Ward and Holmes are both lined up to the right side. Miller slot left. We called that particular play that we ran to finish the game in practice over 100 times. And the first time I dropped the pass in the back of the end zone. And then again, it was tipped. And again, it was intercepted. And again, it was overthrown. Again, I was out of bounds. Again, it was underthrown. The play didn't work. And when he came running back to that huddle, called that play. Gun dock left F short. 6'2 scat flashes. He level on one, right? Why are we calling this particular play right now? After all this time, we've never completed this pass. I remember Heath Miller tapping me on my hip and telling us, Tone, he's going to throw you his next pass. And all I could think was, yeah, right. He's not throwing me the damn ball. Heinz Ward's next to me. Said, we need this one for the championship, fellas. And here Tone go, we need this one, fellas, for the championship. We need this play, man. This win the championship for us right here, man. I had to reiterate it to myself. I had to make it believable for myself. So when I got out and I'm lining up, I'm staring at every defender to see who can take this play away. Who's gonna impede? Who's gonna stop me from getting to the back corner of this end zone? And my mouth and my eyes are watering with excitement because of the coverage that they're actually playing at this particular time. 
that they're going to have to roll this safety when Heinz Ward comes in motion. And as Heinz Ward comes in motion, they give us the coverage we're looking for. The linebacker drops in front of me. I'm thinking that he's going to jam me at the line of scrimmage. He fakes at me and I stutter step and I stumble off the line of scrimmage. I'm eyeing down the safety to see what angle do I need to take so that I could break for the back of the end zone. And he gave me the opening that I was looking for, get to the back of the end zone and just wait, but catch the football. Washington outside left, Roethlisberger has time, throws to the back of the end zone and it is caught for a touchdown by Holmes. Unbelievable. Incredible. <laughs> I was gasping for air because when I caught the ball, I landed on top of the football. But my initial reaction was to roll to find the referee and see what his, what his reaction was and what his call was going to be. Man, it was it, that split second for him to determine whether his hands go up or they come across his body waving that incomplete. When I saw his hands go up in the air, all I could do was clinch the ball and just say, thank you, God, for answering my prayers. I think it was Hines and uh, then Heath came over and they both kept grabbing me and asking, yo, did you get in, Tone? Do you think you got in? You sure? You sure you got in? Tone, are you sure you got in? This is reviewable. It's got to be reviewed. The right foot is coming up. Is it down on the ground? Does he toe tap it? And that's the whole issue right there. Oh, no. When I looked up at that big screen, all I could think was, it gotta be right. Like, they, they gotta have it. My both feet gotta be down. I never remember leaving the ground. I don't recall my feet crossing over or touching each other from all the photos that was shown. And NBC it nailed it. They nailed it. Right, I say he has both feet down and control of the ball. Hey, I say you in, my brother. I told you, you make a name for yourself in the Super Bowl, okay? Yes, Keep working hard. You we'll score right here, baby. You brought us six championship. After review, the receiver controlled the football, came down on both toes, inbounds, touchdown is really on the field. What a throw, what a catch, what a game! Man, I keep taking these deep breaths because I'm actually living in this moment again. That's how you be great! That's how you be great! Bruce Arians knew that this time it would work. He had faith and he put that touch of faith in Big Ben's hand. So it will come down to this. Arizona has two timeouts, but they only have 35 seconds. The nerves, the pressure of coming down to the last seconds had me on the sideline nervous. The Cardinals were a fast striking team. We could not walk away from this game unless our defense was able to seal it. 15 seconds left. Warner in the shotgun. He steps up. He runs around. He's going to be. Did the Steelers have a fumble recovery? Pittsburgh ball. Yes, yeah. It's over, folks. <laughs> the vision that you got, the image of me holding my hands up in sheer joy, it was another thank you to the Lord upstairs that we did it. I get to walk away as a high school state champion, a college national champion, and a National Football League world champion. Greatest feeling in the world. And the Pittsburgh Steelers become the first franchise in history to win six Super Bowls. To see what I had engraved on this trophy before Super Bowl Sunday, it might just blow your mind. So as you can see here on this trophy, it says Santonio Holmes, number 10. This one is for the muck, Super Bowl 43 MVP. This is engraved two weeks before we ever step foot on Super Bowl 
So I'd like to bring up San Antonio to, to get his MVP trophy. So San Antonio, there you go, buddy. I definitely like to thank every everybody that's that's been there through you know through all the thick and thin, help providing a way for me. The muck, what the muck means to me. You see these fists? Right here, baby. It says it all. Muck City. These hands, they worked down in soil. They dug dirt. They picked beans. They were in the cotton field. They helped my mom and my grandma in the cornfield. They even chased rabbits up and down the sugarcane field. To know that 1995 when I asked God to put me in that place, it just reminds me that this was a moment that was given to me that would never be taken away. To the Pittsburgh Steelers for drafting me, for Ohio State for coming to find me, and for Belle Glade, Florida, Glade Central for raising me. This one was for you.